My God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed, saying that the Lord spoke to them. The false prophets acted as if God were far away out of their sight, not knowing or caring what men did. The true prophet feels that he, God, is equally near, equally God in all places alike. Familiar as the word omnipresence is to us, so familiar as almost to have lost its power that God is everywhere. The fact when we realize it is as awful, meaning just so profound now as it was when it presented itself to the souls of patriarch, psalmist, or prophets. With our limited brains, we can envision God seeing us always, kind of like God being right here and looking directly at me. Then I could say, well, yeah, I can see him being like that all the time, but it's far, far more profound than that. He knows my thoughts. He knows every blood cell, trillions of cells in my body, trillions. He knows what every one of them are doing. And even inside of those cells, he's doing all the work, maneuvering, keeping me from cancer. And my every breath is being uh, analyzed. My every heartbeat is analyzed and all controlled by him. He is everywhere all at once. There's never been a moment that God hasn't known every single detail about you and every single thing else. It is really just such a awesome thought. And so what Molina wanted to find was a way to reconcile divine sovereignty and human freedom. Uh, not denying either, but affirming both. And Molinism, which is named for Molina, is the theory that he developed to reconcile divine sovereignty and human freedom. And I, I think it's absolutely brilliant. Once you understand this theory, it sheds light on so many other Christian doctrines and illuminates them in exciting new ways. And what Molina's theory held is that God, in addition to knowing everything that could happen and everything that will happen, he also knows everything that would happen under different circumstances. So, for example, he knows what you would have done if you were the procurator of Judea in the first century and Jesus of Nazareth was dragged before you for trial. He knows whether you, like Pilate, would have condemned him to the cross or whether you would have let him go. In any circumstance that you might be in, God knows what you would freely do. And it's important to understand that Molina is affirming here significant libertarian freedom. It's not, emphatically not, that you're causally determined in those circumstances to do what you would do. Rather, you act freely. It's just that God in his omniscience knows what you would freely choose to do. And so, by creating certain persons in certain circumstances, God can orchestrate and providentially direct the course of human history through the free actions and decisions of human beings. He is completely in control in the sense that it's up to him what circumstances exist and who exists in them, but he doesn't treat people like puppets by making them do what they do in those circumstances. He allows them to freely choose. He takes hands off, so to speak, and says, you make the choice what you want to do in these circumstances, but God knows what they would do. And thus he can direct the course of human history to his ends without obliterating human freedom. And so Molina's theory provides a dramatic reconciliation of divine sovereignty and human freedom, affirming that God is in control of everything that happens, and yet at the same time that he gives to human persons significant libertarian free will.